uh, one that I can edit and then I'm gonna hit go live on Facebook whenever you're ready. Yeah, um, can you just give me some kind of... What to say? Oh no, just a, oh, yeah. okay. a signal as to when I'm about to start speaking. I'll, I'll do that when it's yep. mm -hmm. after you start speaking. Mm, hang on. <laughs> All right, welcome to the latest installment of Ask an Academic. So every now and then we try and pair up a student from the College of Law with one of our faculty and have a chat to them about who they are and what makes them tick. So I'm Bryce Robinson, um, I'm the president of the Law Student Society and I'm here today with Associate Professor Amelia Simpson, who has just ended her tenure as sub-dean at the College of Law and on that note, what obviously being very different to your experience as a teacher and as a researcher, what are you going to take away from being subbed in? What have you learned about the nature of the mm. beast when it comes to, to law schools? Mm. Uh, quite a few things actually, Bryce. Um, mm. um, one thing uh, that I learned that um, didn't really surprise me was the experience of being subbed in and meeting with uh, lots of students and lots of colleagues mm. every day um, really reaffirmed my own understanding of myself as a, a people person and someone who needs to talk with, support, work with other people, uh, not all day, but you know, yeah. for some of every day. Uh, and, uh, and, and I, I kind of knew that about myself beforehand. It was a bit of a test being subbed in as to whether I could overdo that, whether there was a point at which it would become um, a drain. But I don't think I ever reached that point. I think, you know, I, I came away from the two years of subbed in really, um, confirmed in my my belief that that working with people is is much better for me than working on my own all the time uh, the other thing that i learned was that uh, the problems and the frustrations and the fears that uh, that um, students have these days are much the same as they were when i was a student mm. and so my own experiences as a student are still relevant in in trying to nut out how to how to help um, the modern law students uh, navigate the the challenges of of being a student. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Do you think there are differences between students now and students in your time, whether that be like more lazy or more <laughs> overworked or any of the things that we talk about? Yeah. Do you think there are real differences? Yeah, I suppose that the proportion of the students here at, mm. at ANU Law who are um, willing to push themselves in every dimension of their lives to squeeze out every bit of productivity mm. and to um, try to achieve as much as possible in the shortest possible time. The proportion of students of that, with that nature um, has grown. So okay. uh, there are many, many more people with that kind of personality um, who have the potential to, to burn out and that's how I would often encounter, yep. <laughs> encounter these people that are coming crumpled up from having overworked themselves and I have to talk about priorities and what could be shared and um, there were a few of those when I mm. was a student uh, but they really stood out, they were really um, anomalous. I think most people were um, not trying, In so I was a student here at ANU Law in the early 90s and um, most people were not trying to work mm. you know, more than a handful of hours a week and uh, most people were not. Um, saving to buy a new car or um, intent on overseas holidays every yep. year and, um, and most people were not worried in their second year of law about whether they were getting enough practical experience as lawyers to um, yep. in a legal environment to be able to land a job at the end of the day um, so uh, yeah it's it's on the one hand it's a terrific thing that people um, are out there seizing as many opportunities as they can but um, with it comes the danger that uh, yep. you know, too much will will overstretch them and um, and push the past breaking point so um, yeah uh, uh, but um, that's probably uh, the main difference that that I see um, that that sort of more seriousness about their prospects uh, I don't think many of my peers had that I think we all thought well we'll get jobs yeah um, <laughs> and we can we can kick around we can uh, you know sleep in as much as we want we can we can scrape through with with um, pass marks and uh, someone will give us a job at the end of the day but, yeah. Yep. I understand that's not the case. I was going to say, I can't really relate to that at the moment, but no. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. And so now that you're done, now that you've finished sub-dean mm. and have regained, I imagine, an enormous amount of hours, mm. uh, what, what is next? 
Um, well, well, after a period of recovering from mm. the the intensity of being subbed in, um, I, I've, um, I've I've settled into a routine of of working on uh, some research projects that, that mm. will take me through the next few years. So I'm on research leave this semester, which means I don't have any teaching responsibilities. Yep. I'm just just researching, um, and I'm plotting a couple of uh, longer term projects. I've got an idea about a book that I want to write, so I'm I'm trying to put a proposal together at the moment uh, and and that will that will give me enough to work on over the next few years uh, and and I can uh, I can pursue some new interests as well as developing some some existing yeah. interests all right mm. so few years on one thing mm. what is the one thing what's the book uh, well, potentially about <laughs> yeah well um, the one thing that um, that connects most of the research that I've done so far mm. uh, in law is um, the is the constitutional concept of equality and discrimination so i've written about that in a lot of different contexts and what i want to do is in a, a book bring it all together and and provide a you know an encyclopedic reference of uh, all the places where these concepts occur in, in australian constitutional law and how very different that is often from from the way in which um, those terms appear and the role that they play in other constitutions Okay. Mm. And speaking of other constitutions, mm. you, if you do a quick stalk of your research profile, it reveals that you studied at um, Columbia, I your did. Masters yeah. and your SJD as well. Yeah. Why America? Why did you choose to go from ANU to the US and then back here again yeah. um, to study what you do now, which is constitutional law? Okay. Um, well, I knew that by the time I'd finished my undergrad law studies, I knew that, that public law was my thing. Uh, and I, I suppose not having any uh, language ability that might enable me to study anywhere uh, in the, the non-English speaking world, I, mm. I narrowed things down to the US or, or probably the, the UK. Uh, and, and talking with people who'd been exposed to both of those systems as postgrad students and as academics, I, I kind of settled on the US as a better fit for my personality. Um, US teaching is um, you know, the classroom experience is, is much more interactive and um, a little bit more um, assertiveness from students is, is expected and respected um, so I think um, that's the way that I like to be as a student in the classroom and as a teacher as well is, is to be conversational uh, and um, I got the impression that I get more of that in the US than I would in the UK yeah. and the US had a much longer history of um, uh, of uh, written what we call hard constitutional yep. law than, than the UK did at that time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then you also um, asked about why why coming back to Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, that was um, I was unsure when I moved to the US uh, and I was there for a couple of years what I would end up doing, and I did flirt with the idea of staying in the US yep. as, as some other young Australian postgrad students do. Yeah. Um, and. I think I thought that it was uh, too competitive, too tough. It would it would eat me alive, and uh, and I really liked the the pace of work and life in Australia. And you know, Australia's, in my opinion, uh, you know, the the best place that, that you could you could live um, that that I've ever come across. So yeah, um, yeah, it was a pretty easy choice for me. Um, my partner was a bit keener than I was to stay stay in the US, but anyway, he he caved in and, um, yeah, and came great. back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So um. So it was great. It was a fantastic yeah. experience, and I'd recommend the experience of postgrad study to anybody who yeah. who who felt that they got anything at all, um, enjoyed at all their undergrad study. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's um you know it's a bit more of a commitment than. Um, than some people say it used to be in terms of yeah. saving money and the effort you have yeah. to put into applications, but it's you know it's well worth it. It's a great experience. Yeah, and that kind of I guess like uh, intense or discursive nature of education, mm. which is why you went, is that something mm. that we should be trying to do more here in Australia in in our law school? Mm. Should we be trying to so. emulate yeah. that? Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, people learn best mm. when they're in conversation about ideas. Um, and uh, that wasn't only my experience, but it's also um, the, the, the feedback that I get from students about mm. classes that I've taught, classes they've had with other people. So yeah. it's, um, it's, not, it's not something that's always affordable. Uh, it, 
the the, um, the limitations of, of our funding model yeah. here in Australia are, are probably the reason why we have less of it than they do in the US. In the US, you pay fifty thousand dollars a year to be a law student. Yep. Uh, and and so of course you you can get the Rolls Royce teaching experience of sitting in a small group with a, um, a very distinguished expert um, and and having a conversational um, education. Um, here we try to do that uh, mm. by through the vehicle of tutorials yeah. and seminars um, but yeah I think um, most most of my colleagues would be very happy to teach in s smaller groups yeah. um, and and to teach in that more interactive um, didactic way but yeah. uh, you know it's a uh, something that we're, we're working towards as a longer term project it's a bit hard to yeah. just come and up with that money well yeah. that's the thing and it's, it's cultural as well like mm. kind of the tall poppy thing in Australia we don't yeah. often want to yeah. put ourselves out on the line because for whatever reason mm. um, but yeah, that's true. Just stemming from having studied in another jurisdiction and mm. being a constitutional law extraordinaire, thinking about, well, <laughs> um, but thinking about the way that we approach rights in Australian constitutional context, mm. which is limited, mm. um, how do you think that weighs up to the way that the US does it or the way that mm. the UK does it or other similar jurisdictions? Yeah, um, there's a balance to be there's a balance to be struck between uh, utilitarian democratic mm. politics and, and protecting individuals. And I think the US probably um, at times swings too heavily uh, one direction and we yep. often swing too heavily in the other direction towards you know, democratic utilitarian responses mm. to difficult public policy questions and di difficult um, tensions between the needs and rights of individuals and, and, and yeah, what, the, right. what the majority wants. Um, so um, I'd like to think that we could we could land somewhere in the middle at some stage. I mean, yeah. Australia is, to my own mind, um, not nearly responsive enough um, to the the claims of of individuals, you know, yeah. marginalised individuals, and um, and and individuals in need, um, individuals um, who experience discrimination because of some difference that is, um, you know, is legitimate, mm. and. Uh, and I hope that um, just through constant exposure and growing exposure to the way that that international law deals with those, that same balancing question and the way that other constitutional systems deal with that that issue of how to balance, um, that, that we will we will gradually shift. Um, yeah. You know, it's um it's hard to see how right at this moment, but you know it's um you know, uh, there's a lot of time uh, in which to to educate people and, uh, and and tinker around the edges of our political system and, and, and nudge it as in that direction. So yeah, so yeah. comparative constitutional law is really interesting to me partly for that reason because it's, yeah. it's all about um, how are other people dealing with the big difficult questions, um, the tricky things about mm. living together in a society and, and what can we learn. Um, we've been unwilling to learn historically uh, and and uh, other than from a very limited range of, of um, examples um, and models but but you know, ho hopefully in the information age that we're now in with everybody ga gaining increasing amounts of information and exposure to how things are done uh, in other places yeah you know, we can shift our thinking and is that a shift that would come from i guess a harder change by a referenda and mm. an enormous amount of time mm. or would it be more around the edges of the way that we interpret those rights mm. or charters um, of rights in state legislatures or that mm, kind of thing? What, yeah. what do you see being the more productive well, way? Well, I mean, I would love to have a Bill of Rights in the Constitution, but mm. um, that, that's probably a long way off. And, and a, yep. a useful <laughs> stepping stone towards that would be uh, the, the model that, um, that exists in, in the UK and, mm. and similarly um, in some ways in Canada. Yeah. Uh, where where there's a uh, there are mechanisms in place for a com to create a conversation between legislature and, and judiciary about um, uh, improving um, and sh shaving off the sharp edges of of, of, of relationships and and um, and legal um, you know, tough problems. So uh, yeah, I'd look as a, as a first step, I'd be very happy with, uh, and now I think it's got to be national. Um, I, I think in a, a, a nation where there's as much centralised power as we have, it has yeah. to be a national initiative. Yep. Um, if not initially, then at least quickly um, thereafter. So an, a national statutory bill of rights, um, and then hopefully when people become comfortable with that and realise that that judges are not going to take over and, and become dictators yep. as a result, uh, then people might take more seriously uh, and be open to the idea of a constitutional change. 
Excellent. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's, there's hope for the future in that sense. But thank you so much <laughs> for joining me today. Good luck with your book. I think that might be all we have time for. But oh, um, Thanks, Bryce. Yeah, best of luck. We've loved having you as Subdean and we love now having Anne as Subdean. Um, and we will see you all next time for Ask an Academic. So thanks very much.